ministers, honourable parliamentarians, um, Madam Hartman, Madam Chairperson, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Um, I'd like to start by thanking the organisers for their kind invitation. It's a pleasure to be in Tallinn today with the sunshine uh, and speak about the Union's cohesion policy. The support it provides to the development of the European transport system and share some reflections on the post-2020. Uh, let me start by making some introductory remarks concerning cohesion policy. Cohesion policy is the European Union's main public investment policy and accounts for one-third of the EU's total budget. Over 350 billion euros have been set aside for the 2040-2020 period for the development of our regions. We support job creation, business competitiveness, economic growth, sustainable development, and the quality of life of our citizens. Cohesion policy aims at strengthening territorial, social, and economic cohesion across the EU. Therefore, the largest part of our support goes to the cohesion countries and the less developed regions of Europe. It is, of course, no surprise that transport investment is among the main priority for cohesion policy. We are all aware of the importance of transport and mobility for the economic and social development of the European Union and its regions. And they are also, as we've heard today, essential for the smooth functioning of the internal market and more generally for European integration. Therefore, it has been and remains a key goal of EU policy to make sure that all Europeans have access to efficient, safe, reliable and sustainable transport and mobility. Now, the good news is that we have not done so badly in this endeavour. Europeans have access today to one of the best transport systems in the world. But we also know that considerable effort is still required to make our transport system fit for the future. This means making sure that increasing demand for transport and mobility can be made in a more efficient and sustainable manner. Therefore, removing bottlenecks and closing missing links in networks, as well as promoting sustainability in transport, are central priorities for our policy, cohesion policy, in the 2014-2020 period. The TEN-T network is the backbone of the EU transport system, and timely progress towards its completion is essential. Now, as we've heard, um, it's clear that the bulk of the necessary investments will have to come from member states and private sources. Support from the EU budget, therefore, needs to be targeted to where it has the highest added value, for example, in cross-border areas. From the perspective of cohesion policy, this means in particular that we should focus on the member states and regions where the economic development needs are the greatest and where there is less budgetary capacity. Now, we've heard today about the important role of developing uh, Rail Baltica. It's one of the Commission's priority projects. Uh, when completed, Rail Baltica will provide a high-quality rail link for passenger and freight services to the rest of Europe. It will improve access to the internal market and, from a cohesion policy perspective, strengthen cohesion in this part of the European Union. Now, Rail Baltica has already received uh, considerable support from the EU budget, in particular from the 10T programmes uh, in the last period, and more recently from the Connecting Europe facility. This support is crucial for taking forward the development of Rail Baltica and for the completion of the 10T network. But at the same time, it's important not to neglect other layers of the transport system. Ultimately, our objective is not only to complete the 10T network, but to build a modern and multimodal transport system. This system should offer seamless door-to-door -door connectivity and respond to the demand for long-distance and cross-border transport, as well as regional and local mobility. Therefore, cohesion policy seeks to support a balanced and integrated development of infrastructure for all layers of the transport system and for all transport modes. Together with the Connecting Europe facility, cohesion policy supports infrastructure investments in the 10T network, but it also supports other national, regional and local transport infrastructures which connect to and complement the 10T network. In particular, the shared management approach in cohesion policy provides an effective mechanism to ensure that these investments are aligned with EU priorities, 
But at the same time, they respond to the particular needs and circumstances of member states and regions. In particular, in the future, we need to reflect on how we can better support a transition towards multimodality and more sustainability. And in this respect, cohesion policy provides considerable support for the deployment of smart and green solutions, which are so important for tackling some of the main challenges in transport. These include tra congestion, safety, greenhouse gas emissions, and air quality. Indeed, compared to previous periods, cohesion policy today has a stronger emphasis on these areas, on multimodality, on sustainable urban mobility, on intelligent transport systems, the deployment of alternative fuels, um, and less on basic infrastructure such as roads and airports. Now, let me just give you uh, some numbers to illustrate um, the scope of cohesion policy support in the current period. Out of the 350 billion euros available for the seven years from 2014 to 2020, around about one-fifth has been programmed for transport. Um, roughly half is foreseen uh, for support for 10T, and another, the other half, the remaining 36 billion, goes to other layers of the transport system and the deployment of solutions for multimodal and sustainable mobility. And just to confirm that we expect this trend to continue in the post-2020 period. Ladies and gentlemen, building a better and more sustainable transport system is, of course, a question of money. And we've heard a lot today about the sorts of sums which are necessary for Rail Baltica. But it's not only a question of how much we spend. It's also a question of how well we spend it, how we effectively we make use of scarce final, financial resources. It must therefore be clear how a project fits into the big picture and why it should be prioritized for EU funding. In relation to cohesion policy, uh, it's a formal requirement in our programs in the current period that major pr transport investments can only be supported if there is a comprehensive transport plan which provides a solid strategic framework. Furthermore, projects need to be well prepared and supported by cost-benefit analysis. It must be clear which results and benefits can be expected from the project and that they justify the investment. Now, as you know, the Commission is working at full speed on delivering its proposal on the policy framework for the next programming period. The Commission will present its proposal on the 2nd of May, outlining the proposed financial allocations to the different policy areas. This will be followed by legislative proposals for different EU policies, including cohesion policy. Now, I think it's safe to say that cohesion policy will remain an important tool for delivering EU transport policy in the post-2020 period and for enhancing the efficiency and sustainability of our transport system. I'm also certain that cohesion policy will keep its clear focus on less developed member states and regions. There is, as I said before, a need and a continued need to continue a balanced approach to the development of the transport system at all levels, taking account of specific national and regional needs. Therefore, cohesion policy should maintain its flexibility to intervene at all levels of the transport network, including the 10T core and comprehensive networks, regional and local mobility. We also expect, in line with EU priorities, that there will be a strong emphasis on supporting projects linked to new challenges and priorities in transport, such as decarbonisation, digitization or sustainable urban mobility. Now, for the moment, um, there is not much that can be said about uh, financial allocations to transport with any degree of confidence. This is still subject to a political discussion at commission level and of, then, of course, to the discussion with the other institutions. However, whatever the financial allocations for transport will be, it is clear that we need to have good mechanisms in place to prioritize projects for EU support, to identify the projects that need and merit EU support the most. For cohesion policy, this means, as in the current period, that member states should have an up-to-date, comprehensive transport plan and present a realistic and mature project pipeline to deliver on the ground in the post-2020 period. And these transport plans and frameworks will need to take account of new developments in policy and technology, such as automated and connective driving, alternative fuels, and digitization. 
And for investments on the TNT core network, it will be essential to have updated and forward-looking work plans in place for the TNT corridors. We are all aware that building Europe's transport system of the future will require a significant joint effort across all levels of government and administration, and that it will require us all to work together. Cohesion policy will therefore continue to facilitate this joint effort through what we call shared management, uh, an approach which ensures multi-level governance and partnerships. Finally, let me conclude by saying a, a word about the relationship between cohesion policy and the Connecting Europe facility. They are two mutually uh, reinforcing policies uh, which are complementary uh, in their support for investment on the TEN-T network and in the transport sector in general. And together with our colleagues in the Commission, we intend to reinforce our coordination in their implementation and strengthen their complementarity in the post-2020 period. To conclude, we look forward to working closely with our colleagues in the Commission and partners in the Member States to ensure that projects such as Rail Baltica deliver their full economic and social benefits. Um, thank you for your attention.